Well, it's great to have all of you online. My name is Chris, and uh, I want to introduce you to, well, this is Lola. Lola is uh, four months old, and uh, when we first got her, well, she fit into, uh, onto our lap, and she's the smallest, cutest thing, and well, Lola is growing. And what's interesting is earlier, I was uh, feeding her, and uh, it was like one of those moments where, you know, all of us are in this very interesting, interesting season. I don't know um, if you've had these moments where you wake up, or you find yourself, your mind's wandering, and you're like, oh, this is just a movie, or this is just a dream, or, you know, like, I'm just going to wake up, and, and all of this stuff that we're experiencing is not real. And I was sitting uh, watching Lola e- uh, eat, and I grabbed my phone, and uh, I, I turned on the video camera, and I, I just recorded her eating. We put food in the Kong, and it keeps her active. And so I did that, and I, I got done recording her, and I'm like, I should post that. And my next thought was like, no, why? Why? Why post that video? No one's going to wa- want to watch uh, a video of my dog, right, Lola, eating. Like, no one's going to want to want to watch that. And uh, I kind of started moving on through my day. And also, I was like, you know what, Chris? I don't know. There's just something cute and calming and cuddly about, I don't know, just a, just a puppy, right, Lola, as she whines. So I decided, I decided to post it, and I, I just sent it out into uh, social media world. And what was incredible was just the number of people that, that just commented about it. And one person talked about, you know, just there's something about, there's just something about our little furry animals that just give us so much calming peace in this unprecedented moment. Well, Lola, is it time? I know you don't want to sit on my lap the entire time, so why don't you say goodbye to everyone? Say goodbye to everyone. Okay, bye. You know, this, the, this phrase, social distancing, has well, been on all of our minds, all, all of our lips. I mean, where we're hearing government officials talk about social distancing. We're, we're seeing people write on social media about social distancing. I mean, again, it's those two words that um, um, not just for 2020, for the rest of our lives, we'll talk about this idea of social distancing but here's a concern. It's a concern of mine. It's a concern for so many faith leaders. It's a concern for so many government officials as well, is that, that social distancing cannot, must not, must not lead to social isolation. And I think that's why there was something within me when I was recording my dog eating. There was just something about it that, that within my mind, within my heart, that was like, you know what, I just, I got I to gotta share that with everyone because there's just something about it. You see, we're, we're wired, we're built for relationships. No matter your personality type, you know, some of you are, are wired differently for relationships, but all of us, all of us are built to be connected together. And I think that's why one of those significant layers in this season is so, so, so difficult is because we feel already in a short period of time the impact of that. But it's also so important why, well, why we just have to understand that there's so much we can do to still stay connected together. And it's why social distancing cannot, must not lead to social isolation. Last week, as we were just trying to figure out what life looked like, we, well, we went online, all of our physical campuses closed, and we just said, hey, we're going to be one church right where you are, wherever that might be. And one of the things we, we lo- landed on, what I landed on, was just the idea of, you know, in this, in this season where there's fear surrounding our world, we must be a fearless church. And there's three foundations that we, we talked about to be a fearless church. One was this. We need to pray relentlessly. And I know I have found myself uh, in every moment of every day just pausing saying, God, this is too much. Or God, I don't know what the right decision is. Or God, I, I don't even know how to process this emotion. Or God, I, I'm not sure about the future. Or God, what about? Like I just find myself constantly. And there's just something about just going to God in every single moment with every single thought. 
But to be a fearless church, we all must pray relentlessly. The second thing that, that I shared is that we must love intentionally, love with action. We must love first in every moment. And sometimes, most times, it's so difficult to love intentionally when fear is dominating our minds, our thoughts, our hearts. And that's why we must pray relentlessly. And the third thought was to give generously, that a fearless church, especially in very difficult times, when uncertainty and the unknown is everywhere, like we want to go internal, we want to hunker down, we want to hold on to what we have, but a fearless church says, you know what, we're going to be a generous church. And you see, those three foundations are so important because those are just not words I came up with, thoughts that I came up with, but they were part of the early, early church. And you see, Paul, the Apostle Paul, was writing a letter to the church, a gathering of people located in the city of Rome. And you think about that letter some 2,000 years ago, and then, well, I'm sure all of you have read the headlines about what's going on in Italy right now. And Paul, writing this letter, shares some thoughts. And you see, those three, three foundational principles, to pray relentlessly, to love intentionally, and to give generously, like those three foundational principles of being a fearless church are all found well, in these words that Paul wrote. Paul writes, uh, don't just pretend to love others. Pretend. And isn't that the danger for all of us? It's easy to pretend, right? To say the right words. To give the right response. To post the right thing on social media. It's so easy to Pretend about loving. And that's why love intentionally is all about action. It's moving forward. It's actually doing something. Not just speaking words, but living it out. And I think that's why Paul's like, hey, don't pretend. It's easy to pretend. Hey, Christ followers, it's easy to pretend that you actually love people. And that's why our love must model Jesus' love. And that's the power of love and action that Jesus chose to crawl upon a cross for everyone. That's loving intentionally. And Paul goes, no, 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 really love them. And you can just hear Paul with maybe a tinge of sarcasm. It's like, no, 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 no. You, you got, you, you, you stop pretending. Really, listen, really, stop, stop with the church words. Stop with all the, the right little mushy words that you can say. Stop with the little emojis. Stop with the little Facebook posts. No, 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 really, Love them. And then he writes, hate what is wrong. It's a strong statement, isn't it? And right now in our world, there's, there's a bunch of things that I know I find myself hating. When you think about the price gouging that's going on, and think about the hoarding that's going on, people that really are in need of and they now can't find because people are just hoarding everything to themselves. The number of people dying, the numbers as they skyrocket, like those are things that you just wanna say, yeah, I, I hate that that's what's happening in people's lives. I know for me as a dad, and this might sound so surface level, but I have a senior in high school, and my wife and I have talked about it. It's like the thought of, you know, her graduation not happening. And I know there's a bunch of unknowns around that. And, and I know that that's so surface level compared to what other people are facing. I understand that. I'm just saying as a dad, you know, for 17, 18 years, looking forward to that moment and just going, oh, that, that moment might not happen. You know, I hate that for all of us, we're living in extreme times of uncertainty. So many of my thoughts are just swirling around all the what might happen or what might be, even though I've spent my life telling people, hey, you know, just focus on today, focus on today. I mean, Jesus talked about it. I'll give you what you need for today, and that's real. And I believe that with all my heart. I'm just, I'm just saying, so many of the moments, my mind starts to shift to tomorrow, and that's why praying relentlessly is so important to keep our minds tethered to today, that God will give us what we need for 
today, that God will give us the peace that we need for today, that God will give us the courage for what we need for today, that God will give us the strength for what we need today. And tomorrow, he'll give us everything we need for tomorrow. We gotta hate what's wrong, but hold tightly to what is good. And there's so much good happening. Story after story after story of good things happening. That God is redeeming such a difficult, difficult season around our world to redeem it for good. And God is a master of taking what is broken and, and putting it back together, taking what is, uh, is meant for wrong and leveraging it for what is good. And I just tell you, the number of churches that are being a bright light around our world, what's help, happening online, I mean, not just uh, for weekend service, but every moment throughout the week. Not just Tri-County Church, but countless churches. They're taking their mission that they hold on tightly to, the mission, the good news, the gospel about Jesus, and saying, we're going to hold on to our mission. We're not going to let go of our mission. We're going to hold tightly to our mission, the good news, the gospel of Jesus. But we're going to release our method and we're going to do everything we can now in a new day with a new time to tell everyone about Jesus. Let's continue to be that church. And then Paul says, love each other with genuine affection. The literal translation is brotherly love. To love each other like we're family because we are family because God is our heavenly father. That we must love each other with that depth, with that sincerity, with that authenticity. And he goes, and take delight in honoring each other. That idea of honoring each other is to lift each other up, to elevate people above ourselves. And again, in this season, it's so difficult. Let's just be real with each other. It's so difficult to think about everyone else's needs when you're getting the phone calls about your job, your husband, your wife is letting you know about their job, when, when you're not sure about what is next and you're not sure how to make ends meet and you're not sure about food and you're not sure about your kids and you're not sure about your loved ones, when the uncertainty is everywhere, it's hard it's so difficult to elevate other people around us because why? We're looking at ourselves, but it's so imperative. A fearless church loves intentionally. It's about other people. That's why Paul said, hey, church, honor each other. Lift other people up. Get your eyes off of yourselves and realize that this is an unprecedented moment with unprecedented opportunity. He says, never, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I know for me, I, it's been such an encouragement. For the Tri-County Church staff and team, our team members are just rising up in ways that are just so inspiring. I mean, working countless hours over this last week to turn on a dime, to adjust how we usually do church, to say we have to look at it from a, a completely different way. So many people texting me and other people on our teams to say, I want to help, I want to help, how can I help? Or I see a need, I want to help meet the need. What can I do to be a part of being a bright light in our local communities? It's been so overwhelming in such an amazing way to see so many of you Partner with us to be the church. As I scroll through my Facebook and social media feeds, it's been encouraging. I read one story from a local business owner. She uh, takes uh, pictures, a very, very gifted, gifted um, photographer. And uh, well, all of her weddings and other photo shoots, I mean, they just ended. They just stopped. And she posted this. She said, hey, small business owners. I know that so many of you are trying to get your, your products online, to trying to adjust into this new season. She goes, I want to help. And she said, send me your products and I'll take pictures for you and give you the pictures. 
That's not being lazy. And that's serving the Lord enthusiastically. What can you do? What has God placed within your hands? To serve people with joy. To serve people with gratitude. To serve people generously. What can you do in this season? And then Paul gives us three great kind of directives. He says, rejoice in confident hope. Confident hope. Hope that God is on his throne. Hope that there's nothing too big for God. Hope that God will work through all things, all things, even this COVID-19 thing. Hope that God is on the move. Hope that God is leveraging your story, even in the midst of one of the most difficult trials, that God is going to leverage you. Hope to Jesus. Died for everyone. Hope, confident hope. Second thing he writes is be patient in trouble. But when Paul wrote that, that wasn't a a passive patient. That wasn't a hunkering down patience. That wasn't a just leaning back type of patience. That wasn't a, well, I'm just going to wait this thing out patience. That's not one of those, well, I'm just going to wait for them to lift the quarantine patient. No, no, no. When Paul wrote be patient in trouble, this was active this, this has everything to do with steadfast endurance. To say, hey, in the midst of your trouble, move through it. In the midst of your trouble, how are you going to elevate other people? In the midst of trouble, how are you going to put your love into action? In the midst of your trouble, what are you going to do to serve people enthusiastically? In the midst of your trouble, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Let me ask you this. What are you going to do in the midst of your trouble? What are you going to do? What are you going to do, church, to be a bright light right in this moment? And the third thing Paul writes, and keep on praying. See, praying relentlessly is a foundation of being a relentless church. And then Paul says, when God's people are in need, Be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. (laughs) That's giving generously. Seeing a need, meeting a need. Understanding that everything we have, I mean, this this is the test of faith. That everything we have is God's. And that everything we give away, we're going to trust that God is going to fill that need. That stretches faith. That gives confidence and hope that God will do everything he has promised to do. Confident hope. So, in our time, hey church... Let's hope. Let's hope. And you see, we can hope because hope has a name. And his name's Jesus. And we can hold on to that hope. We can have security in that hope. Even in the midst of the fear, even when our minds are racing about all the unknown that might happen in the future, that we tether our hope to Jesus. And we have such a great opportunity to share that hope in all of our local communities. I was working on this message, and I'll just be honest with you, difficult. Difficult to, to take all the thoughts in my mind. I've talked with so many people, and kind of the, the, the common thread is all of our minds are just mush right now. I mean, we have mushy minds and you're trying to get clarity trying to get direction trying to hold on to information I mean all of that is just it's, it's such an interesting season 
And as I was trying to just keep focus, and I just kept on telling God, I, I shared this with, with someone on the phone. I was like, they had called me as I was working on my message, and they called me, and they're like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to get my message done. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry for interrupting you. I'm like, it's okay. My, my mind's mushy. And then I paused. I'm like, I'm just trusting that God is going to work through the mush. And as I was trying to get this message together, and I'm just, again, trusting God, guess what happened? I got a Facebook message and a text message. The text message was from my mom in Vegas, and she just wanted to share with me that a church had reached out to her, and my, my mom has this whole group of ladies that sew, and this, this church reached out and said, hey, there's a need from someone at, at one of the local hospitals, and they need face masks. And they're like, hey, can you just mobilize people to, to sew face masks because we can't get face masks. And my mom was like, hey, in this moment of need, and she was just sharing this with me. She goes, we can do that. So she's mobilizing people right now to make face masks for hospitals in Vegas. The same time I had a Facebook message from someone attached to one of our local uh, churches and he works for uh, an elder care facility and he's like, hey, we have grave need for face masks. Can, can, can you help us mobilize people that can make face masks? We have the patterns, we just need people with, with, with material and the ability to make face masks. And our team just responded and said, we can do that. I just want you to know that's a real need right now. A real need right now. So if you know how to sew, if you have material, help us. We'll get, we'll, we're gonna get the information out. But those are things we can do right now to breathe Hope in all of our local communities. We want to be a fearless church. In the uncertainty of our moment, let's pray relentlessly. Let's love intentionally. Let's give generously. Let's be that church. This, this past week, we put together a quick uh, website uh, you can see the link right behind me. It's fearlesschur.ch. So it's, it spells fearless church. Just remember to put that dot on the last uh, ch. And there, there's two important links that all of you need to know about. One link that says, I need help. And if that's you, click it. We want to know where you need help. Maybe that's with food. Maybe that's with prayer. Maybe it's with a list of other things. But if you need help, we want to know. The second link is I want to help. We need you to be a part of it. And maybe you need help and you want to help. Awesome. Because that's real. But we want to be a church that is breathing hope into all of our local communities. Let's be a fearless church. Join us. Join us. In meeting the needs of people praying for people, loving intentionally, love in action. Let's be that church. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you. Even in the midst of this troubling time, I want to thank you for what you're doing in and through your church. Not Tri-County Church, but your church around the world that we are just one small piece of. Lord, I thank you for countless people that are joining online right now that are passionate about being a fearless church, even in their time of need, that they want to do what they can to meet other people's needs. Lord, I just pray that we'll be a church that breathes hope, breathes hope, to every single person's life. In your name I pray.